COVID lockdown, Shanghai style. 26 million people, by some measures the biggest city in the world, confined to their homes. But breaking through the silence, drone instructions. There have been desperate complaints of shortages of food, water and medicines, overburdened delivery networks and growing protests. Public services are in chaos. One sick American, rather than being allowed to go home to isolate, was instructed to bed down on the ground outside a full hospital. Look, I've been sleeping on the ground. Man, our lockdowns are, are just a little different, you know? When they say that you're locked down, then there's no going outside, there's no opening your doors. It's, you know, you just kind of do as you're told. It's not just Shanghai. Across China, some 23 cities and 200 million people are under full or partial lockdown. And that's all having a severe impact on the massive Chinese economy. The Wuhan lockdown at the start of the pandemic in 2020 led to a historic collapse in economic activity in China. Amid the Shanghai lockdown, indicators are plunging again. But despite the draconian Shanghai lockdown, which began on the 28th of March, new COVID cases are continuing to rise, reflecting the awesome transmissibility of the Omicron variant. There are two domestic barriers to getting out of this. First, China's low vaccination rate among the elderly, particularly for the highly vulnerable over 80s. Over 80 vaccination rate, if we look at a third dose, it's only about 20%. Uh, so it's extremely low, much lower than uh, the Western countries. And the vaccination campaign is slowing down dramatically. The objective so far is to mitigate the transmission, to win more time. But if that's the objective, then that should be uh, complied with uh, a faster vaccination campaign and more people get vaccinated. But we don't say this in the data. The other barrier is politics. This is very closely associated with President Xi on his political legacy that managed to create a zero-COVID society. And the Chinese population expect a society that is COVID-free. But the argument is from mm. some that it's creating domestic instability. Does there come a point where there's more instability from the policy than there is from abandoning it? What is an interesting contradiction here? It's almost like a chicken or egg question, exactly what he wanted. He can't have a stability, but then he cannot have economic prosperity. What I've noticed quite interesting is that recently the government talking so less about prosperity, but more about the stability. So I think at the end of the day, he'll carry on with zero COVID strategy. The danger is, though, that the Chinese government has painted itself into an excruciatingly painful economic and social corner. The lockdown situation in China is not only a threat to the Chinese economy, but the world economy as well, very much including the UK. Shanghai is home to the world's largest container port, which is now hobbled. The fear is of disruption to global supply chains, which are already severely stressed. Plus, China is the biggest single driver of global growth, and analysts are slashing their forecasts. In a nutshell, the Chinese situation ratchets up the stagflationary nightmare, that 1970s combination of high inflation and economic stagnation. Stagnation on the streets of Shanghai. The great fear is that it won't stay there. <laughs>